this is Colorway Korth Earth by Into the World from the July 2013 Lux Club. It is 80% merino, 20% silk. And I'm going to be very honest and say that I am not thrilled with the colors. This is what we're working with. Now, the reason why I have some issues with it is because it's very monocolor. If I was to turn this into black and white or grayscale, it would be fairly, fairly consistent. We wouldn't have a whole lot of variation in the uh, value of the color. In other words, not a lot of darks and lights, at least that I can see. I mean, that could change as we open this up and tease it out a little bit, but I really couldn't tell you. I was thinking I would make this a reply with what's called fractal spinning. So what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be dividing this into three. Let's say that's about a third. And that's about a third. Okay. So then you wind up with three long strands, right? Each of these three strands is going to be spun slightly differently. This one will be just spun the way it is as one long strand. Strand number two, I am going to be splitting it in half. And so once I have finished spinning all of the first part of strand number two, I will then spin the second half of strand number two. Now, I, I'm basically just using this small bit as an analogy for the rest of this huge honkin' braid. This guy gets split in two. And then each of those gets split into two. And once again, they are going to be spun one after the other. Now, as you can see, once you get down to this size, you, you have a much smaller amount of fluff to work with. So what this will do is it's going to distribute the color along the finished yarn so that all of these colors that are in the yarn will hopefully barber pole in a fairly nice way. So that's where we were by end of stream. I've got a solid game plan to work from. I'm really not a fan of that olive color, so I hope the fractal spin will help diffuse it a bit so it doesn't look like baby puke on the Mediterranean. Later. The basement is cold, so I moved operations upstairs to the living room. That's the beauty of a portable e-spinner like the electric eel wheel 6. As long as you have a way to carry it, you can take it anywhere. It's very portable. I've only had a couple of small issues with the EEW6. The magnets for the included orifice hook are seated on the left side of the spinner, and I'm right-handed, so I find retrieving and storing the hook to be inconvenient. I also don't have a place to hitch my single if I need to take a short break. That's probably a user issue and less a manufacturer's problem, as I doubt other e-spinner makers have built in a hitch for those times when you have to get up quickly to use the washroom, answer the door, or pour another cup of tea. I am a huge fan of 3M command hooks, so I may experiment with sticking a small hook on the side of the electric eel wheel and see if that helps. the folks watching the live stream at the beginning of this video found that watching me spin was a bit hypnotic. 
If that's the case, you want to boop the like button and comment, subscribe, and tell all your friends about this channel. Maybe even ding the bell so you know when I upload. Go ham, friends. Applying on the electric eel wheel 6 is very smooth and sweet. Because you're able to set your speed at a constant rate, you can concentrate on keeping your singles from plying back on themselves and just relax into the spin. I often find that trying to do this while moving my feet on the manual wheel can be problematic. That's the thing with different types of wheels. They can have personalities. My Shaq Reeves likes to spin, but it isn't a fan of plying, so we'll sometimes decide to stick while treadling or throw the drive band. That's possibly a user error, but it's frustrating nonetheless. In comparison, setting up the electric eel wheel and tinkering until I found the right speed and tension was lovely. I even managed to chain ply some of the leftover singles, which is something I usually have trouble with. The Lazy Kate does a fine job, by the way, but be aware that you don't need a lot of tension on the elastic to keep the bobbin from free spinning. Too much tension means the bobbin takes more effort to move, which risks snapping your single. Because bases can be either locked together or used separately, you can move them farther apart if there's a danger of the singles getting tangled. I just suggest placing them on a stable surface like a table or the floor because one good yank could topple everything over into a mess of kinked yarn singles and regret. The resulting yarn is, for the most part, very consistently spun. I'd say it's close to heavy fingering weight or light decay. I could very easily make socks or a nice shawl out of this yarn if I wanted to give someone the most luxurious merino silk knitwear experience. Because I still don't like these colors. The green is, if anything, even more overwhelming than it was before, and yellowy greens are not in my complexion's ideal color palette. I can think of a couple of folks who might enjoy it though, so while it's not for me, it may tell me what it wants to become and for whom. Into the handspun stash it goes. I'll start work on another yarn that will hopefully be more to my liking. See, that's the risk you take when you're in a yarn or fiber club. It's not like you choose the color way you want at the time of purchase. It's a surprise right up until the moment when you open your mail. Sometimes the colors suit you, sometimes they don't. I have plenty more fiber that caters to my own tastes. Maybe something from Fat Cat Nets next time. Till then! <laughs>